All right, let's see how this goes. Good afternoon, welcome to my broadcast. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. And every day, um, going for almost a year now, Actually, it was over a year because I started with weekly, but now the daily. Um, I do these talks called Messages, Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today is number 337. And today's topic is um, a choice, basically. To stay safe in a comfortable relationship or to stay single and hold up what you really want. And to be honest... I'll say, I'll say which camp I'm in, but the reality is there's actually more than one answer to this because it's not black or white. Um, as I'm sitting with this, I'm realizing more and more as I wrote the title and said I'm going to do this broadcast, more ideas are popping in to talk about. So <laughs> this is not going to be a straightforward black and white conversation. Um, so choice points, basically the either or in the sense of staying in a relationship that's comfortable or holding it for the one you really want. There is a third option, maybe a fourth option I'm already sitting with going, well, maybe there's an option where you can stay in a relationship and make it what you want. There is that possibility as well. So I'll get to that one later on. But let me speak to the... I don't want to say it that way. That's giving away the answer. Let me say it this way. <laughs> there's two... Um, pieces I want to put on the table. I'm going to care if I say this because I... I I have, a, I have a planned answer, so I, want, I think I have a planned answer. I could be wrong. Um, but I want to stay, like, um, neutral as I can in this context of one or the other until I can give a, <clears throat> excuse me, a convincing argument for one choice or the other. If that makes sense. So, <clears throat> let's get into this, shall we? So, first of all, many people out there, probably not you, but somebody you know, um, has chosen to be in a comfortable relationship. I should say chosen to be comfortable in a relationship that wasn't everything they wanted. So that may be you, that may be somebody else. Um, but those I've watched in this process, and particularly some of my clients I've talked to recently, that's what they thought they were in. Or I should say, looking back in hindsight, that's what they realized they were in, which is a comfortable relationship, but it stifled them. It actually suffocated them energetically. They didn't feel comfortable. On the other side of the coin, um, there are people like me who've chosen to stay single, to hold up what they want, now, I'll explain in a minute what I'm using as my justification, I don't know, but my, my particular perspective on this. But there are those people who will choose to stay single and not be in that many relationships. And for some perspectives, it's saying, well, you should be in a relationship more frequently because you get to grow and experience which relationships are about, ideally, and transform. Whereas if you are, um, how do you say this, if you're staying single all the time, maybe you're missing out on that. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Um... I'm realizing now as I'm doing this, I don't actually have a clear direction to go with this, which is actually more fun because it'll be more free for all and free form and free flowing. So, staying comfortable in a relationship. Now, let me put a caveat on this. If you're in a long term relationship where it's become comfortable and you've become um, unsatisfied, but you have a family and other things like that, it can be more challenging for sure. And so, I'm not necessarily going to speak to that because it's a more complex conversation. This is more than what two people involved with kids and everything. But in terms of staying in a relationship where it's just easy, may not be the highest goal, maybe. And I mean easy in the sense there's no effort involved, no growth, no um, expansion, possibilities, excitement, journey. Just it's, you get to give somebody, it's like, oh, okay, and that's it. There's no fire, there's no juice, there's no, ex no excitement. And that, to me, isn't really a healthy relationship. It's a safe one. It's a... <laughs> I wouldn't say boring necessarily, but it may be unsatisfying. Being in a relationship that's not that way you want to grow it, that's, this is where it takes, this takes another question, takes question to another level, say this way. In my book, I talk about this, about the rubber band experience of relationships. And by the way, my book is 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. You can get it on my website, which is barryselby.com forward slash book. There, that's the plug out of the way. In one of the chapters in the book, I talk about the, the rubber band effect in a relationship. And the idea being is if you're in a relationship that is comfortable and you want to grow, there's going to be one of three things that happens. Now, you can, you can 
preface that by saying if you enroll the other person in growing, that's, that makes things easier because you're both choosing to grow, which is great. That obviates the need for the um, rubber band experience. So let me give you three pieces of rubber band experience in this con context. So you start to grow. You, you study books. You work with a coach. You do workshops and retreats and things that transform your life. And your partner doesn't. In this context, there's one of three things that can happen. So, hey, good to see you here. I'm seeing these people. It's nice to see the people in the broadcast. Thanks for joining me. And by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, you won't have seen the people because this is a Facebook Live first. It will then be on YouTube. So, one of three things can happen. Your growth, your transformation, your evolution becomes inspiring to your partner. And they go, I want what she's having or he's having or whatever that is. And you grow as well. That's awesome. The... Possibility of that happening, though, isn't that high. Unless you've enrolled them ahead of time, which is what I said earlier, one of the other two things that can happen. Well, the third one. Let me just go to the second one first. So one option is your partner goes, I'm excited about what she's, that my partner's doing. I want to grow with them. I want to become more. I'm going to do that. That's a possibility. A lesser possibility is that the other person is like, nope, I'm staying where I am. And you decide that the relationship is more important to you than your personal growth. Now, this is a rare one, but I've seen people who give that up for their partnership. Again, if there's family involved, it can be more challenging. But certainly, it can be a challenging choice to make between the two. So, hi, Ruth. Nice to see you here, too. Thank you for joining me. Um, the third choice, though, which is the most likely choice of all three, is that if you start growing and transforming and becoming more of who you really are, the other person won't move and you won't change. The relationship's going to end. And it's a big challenge for people who are doing work in the personal growth, spiritual growth, um, being in the journey of evolving and becoming more of themselves. Unless the partner does it with them, it's very hard to maintain a healthy relationship because the, the distance grows greater and greater between the two partners. And if you have a family that's being pulled apart by that, it can be very challenging. But I'm not getting into that right now. So that's one side. This side, I think it was. I can't remember which side the screen I was on. That side, I think I was talking about um, being in a comfortable relationship. The other opportunity, the other possibility, the other choice, which is the one I have been in the camp of for a long time, is choosing to, I won't say necessarily holding out for um, the, the ideal relationship, although they title it that way. I would put it this way, speaking from personal experience, is, I'm speaking to your, direct, your experience, I had a feeling maybe, because what we talked about a while ago, I had a feeling this might resonate, so I thank you for, I hope this is helping you, Ruth. Um, for me personally, this journey has been one I've been on for a long time. I've been in the study of personal development, humans, understanding, spiritual growth, all these different things, Jesus, for over 30 years now. Um, so my life has changed a lot over 30 years. It's a continual evolution, and my relationships have been journeys along the way. But I've never found anybody who would do this journey with me to this point. Now, I'm now in a place where I'm teaching this stuff and working through my own integration of everything I've learned to facilitate and support other people. I'm just, just in there. Yes, that is, um, yeah. Well, I'm glad it's resonating for both of you. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Um, for me, I have been really clear. And this, this is part of the work I went through to change my life in 2007. And I've said this before about being in the masculine, about being driven by purpose. But the reality is for me is, and speaking totally transparently, is that I'm holding out for the ideal relationship because what I, what I want in relationship is something that adds to my life and adds to my business because the work I do, which is about relationships and living authentically and the masculine and feminine polarity, which is what changed my life 10 years ago, 11 years ago, is I want someone who can be in that journey and that conversation with me and can teach with me. So we work together. In fact, that's my prayer this year that's gonna, that I'm choosing to draw in. So you heard it here first, <laughs> kind of, sort of. And so for me, my work, my purpose, my mission, because especially in the masculine, it's driven this way, this is actually um, something I learned from one of my teachers, and it's actually quoted in the Born of the Books I recommend highly, which is The Way of the Superior Man by David Dada. Um, that's D-E-I-D-A. Chapter 7, he says, A man's purpose must come before his relationship. And that was one of the things I had to learn the hard way, and it changed my life. And it also changed my framework for relationship, because I won't be in relationship again unless my work comes first. Not to say that I'm going to be a workaholic, but more that my focus and my mission is my, focus, is my priority, because one... It takes the pressure off my partner to be that for me because it's not her job. And secondly, it fulfills me in such a way that a relationship is not meant to and can't, that living my truth is what lines up for me. So 
in this conversation about relationship and about choosing to hold out for relationship, there is such a thing as holding out for impossibilities. And as much as I have said so much about you can have what you really want, some of people's visions out there are so um, impossible that it can't happen. Especially if you want to be with, say, ladies, you want to be with Brad Pitt, he may not be available. Or somebody else, for example, or, or you know, anybody for that matter. So I'm saying it to say that having a high, high um, intention for what you really want in a relationship is ideal. But being willing to watch where that goes and being willing to let spirit lead you is a good thing too. Um, ladies in particular, you may have not learned this before because you may have been trained to be like the men, which is to go out and get things done and make things happen. But your true power about relationship, and for true power about anything, is you can manifest it through attraction, not by, hunt, not by, not by pursuing. So for you ladies watching this, it's a, if you're a single now looking for that real relationship, it's a good time to get really clear about what it is you really want. It's a good thing to know what your red flags are, flag, red flags are, never have again, and your green flags what you really must have. And focus on what your vision is, what your intention is, what you want to manifest and what you want to partner with in relationship and in life. This is leading to a whole other piece, which I didn't want to do this time, but I wanted to just speak to it. So, um, sorry, I'm, I'm seeing four different threads, and I'm seeing which one I want to follow. I want to keep this talk to a because these are my daily talks, keep it succinct, but here's, here's a couple of pieces. And say this. If you are, oh, just see what you say, men on missions seem closed off to relationship. Ah, you're attracted to a man on a mission, but I also feel that they haven't had the time and don't put relationship as a priority. Okay, let me speak to that, since you asked that, put that out there. Um, a man is purpose-driven, which may not be a mission, by the way. Missions can be different. A man's purpose is really what makes him directional and clear where he's going. A per man's purpose can also be what, what gets him out of bed in the morning. A man's purpose can be, and he's all can, not requires, but can be, what gives him fire and vigor to keep going in life and make things happen. And if you're showing up to him as a relationship that doesn't align with that, then he may not be open to that. Um... Ruth, I'll get to that point. Thank you for that. It's a good, it's a good statement. Um, so let me say this to finish up Justina's question or to, answer, to state to that. For me personally, I didn't know for several years in my journey that I wasn't available for a relationship because I wasn't. And I was wondering why I wasn't finding what I wanted because the truth was I wasn't ready. I had to really get my work so solid inside of me because of the lessons in the past is I wouldn't be ready for a relationship until I can actually be in a relationship without losing track of what I was doing. And that's a big piece, by the way. For me, I didn't realize in the past I would give up what I was focused on because my partner was so attractive and so um, pulling me in and I would just dive into the relationship and give up everything else. Bad mistake for me. Relationships were fun for a while, but it wasn't good for her either. So being clear about my work and staying true to it and, and keep going with it and then finding the way to have a relationship added to that, which we can do as men, it's almost like... Um, I use, I use an analogy about spinning plates, like the, the circus where they spin the plates on the poles. It's almost like getting our purpose spinning so strongly we can then focus on a second one, which is then a relationship. Because we men, generally speaking, are single-focused. So to try and juggle two or three things at once is hard to do at the same time. If we get one thing really spinning well, one thing really working well, we can add a second piece more easily. So, Justina, to your, your point, if that person you're attracted to is on a mission, but their mission is strong enough that they can trust themselves to keep going, then they can have a relationship. With you, perhaps. Um, Ruth, Ruth, you said red flags are one thing. Breaking through the denial of them is another level. Yeah, that is a whole other conversation. Um, I'll do that one as another talk. That's, that's a bit off topic for this one. But I, as I've got another talk tomorrow, which will be number 338, I'm going to do it on tomorrow about red flags that you don't even see. But that's a good point. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's another piece in there somewhere. So you have a choice. You can choose either one of these situations or a third or a fourth choice. I'm just throwing these ideas as my um, topic for today about choosing to be in an average, a, a comfortable relationship versus a growing, transformative, and holding for what you really want. Yeah. You're welcome, Justina. Yeah, timing. Um, as I said, I've been on this path myself, this particular part of my path, since 2007. And up until maybe about a year ago, I couldn't truly trust what I was doing as strong enough 
to really have a healthy relationship without losing track of what I was doing. Now I'm very clear. And it, it hit me really strongly about, actually about a month ago. I think it's about a month ago. But certainly that's become clear for me now. And because the work I'm doing is such that I won't even be in a relationship, to be honest, this is just me, me exposing my vision intentions, is I won't be in a relationship with a woman who doesn't have a certain amount of growth under her own belt. So she's already in the path and growing and learning, becoming more herself. And secondly, that she, her work complements or adds to or fits together with what I do as well. So if she's not focusing in the area of health and healing, relationships, masculine and feminine polarity, those sort of things, they're not part of her, her zone of understanding, that isn't going to work very well. So that's personal for me. I'm not saying everybody. That's just my experience. So Justina, to speak to what you said again about that choice of finding someone who's on a mission, depending on what their mission is, what you do may or may not be relevant to that. So I'm just saying in my context, because of my focus is about relationships, you're kind of right in the middle of what I'm talking about. So it's hard to avoid that. I think I've exhausted that point. Um, thank you for the questions and comments, by the way. I really appreciate that. And thanks for being with me in this uh, daily broadcast. So let me summarize and put the usual um, closing credits on, as it were. So, sorry, so I want someone in my field. Um, not necessarily. Justine, what I'm actually looking for is someone who has skills that overlap mine and skills that contrast with mine. So someone who can coach, speak, facilitate, counsel, however that is, but also someone, because I'm this is where I'm going, by the way, is someone who would be willing to be on stage with me as well at some point. I have a calling, and it's, I didn't realize I had to swallow that one. <laughs> Interesting. Um, my, my focus where I'm going is, in, is going to be working on stage somehow teaching groups, working with groups, maybe retreats, maybe live events. I don't know yet what it's going to be, but I think I want partnership with someone who's going to be there with me because it feels a lot safer. <laughs> so in my field, yes and no. I mean, in because in, because my work's changing, by the way. Oh, let me, let me drop this one on you. <laughs> um, there's some things brewing this year for me that are going to speak more to being a, a champion of the divine feminine, which I speak about in my, in my bio, to actually be a voice for feminine leadership, feminine authority, fem feminine authority, feminine authenticity, which is going to include masculine polarity as well. So it's not going to be just relationship. It's about living authentically. And I actually have a brand and a um, new program launching later in the year that aren't ready yet, which is about living authentically. So that's someone in that field overlapping will be great too. So what Ruth said earlier about uh, not even being able to see the red flags, being authentic does require awareness of the red flags. It's part of the process. So becoming willing to find out how to get there, getting there and transforming is part of that process. Um, another piece. Yeah, because in fact, speaking to that, I'm co-leading a series in June. And I'll be announcing that more, sh more, re more soon, which is, <clears throat> which is going to be a series of 11 experts. <clears throat> We're launching a program, um, sorry, it'll be an ongoing online series, which would be um, embodying the divine feminine through love which is a, a series of talks that myself and my coach, who's female, will be co-facilitating with 11 experts. So that's outside the framework of relationships. It's actually more about women living true to their heart, which is what I'm very passionate about too. So in terms of uh, someone in my field, there's room in there. You know, she might be involved in, um, since you're asking, <laughs> being transparent, it could be someone who's um, involved in Tantra, for example, which is not an area I'm an expert in. I've studied a little bit, but I'm not an expert. So she might be involved in that. So it's overlapping fields in that sense. She could be something else in the area of health, wholeness, embodiment, something like that. I don't know, too. So do you want to ask a question, Justina? There's room. Um, with that, I want to summarize because this talk's going a bit longer than I planned. Um, this is my daily broadcast, by the way. This is number 337 in an ongoing series of talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Art. Um, they live on my business page, which you can find them more easily on, on Facebook, which is Barry Sowey, the author. They're also on my uh, YouTube channel, which is where this will go as well, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the, Messages from the Masculine. Also on my website, but that page is getting really hard to load, so I wouldn't recommend going there, but if you must go there, it's the video blog on my website, which is barryselby.com. And if you're stuck in this area and you want to get some help in the area of love and relationships, as I'm still doing that, you can go to my website and click on the Let's Chat button in the navigation bar because that will give you a gift of a complimentary clarity conversation with me, 30-minute conversation to serve you and help you. Um, and I can, we can sit down and talk. It'll be over a, a schedule on my calendar. We'll set up a call and we'll make it happen. 
So that's that. Just think that we said, um, you love someone who can speak all my languages of art and love. Mm -hmm. And yes, we don't want to be too limited, but core values, so communication is clear. Yes, zero, easy, yes, indeed. Well, Justine, if you want some help, I can reach out to you. Or you can reach out to me, rather. And you're very welcome. Um, I'm just going to cover everything. Oh, yeah. In case you know somebody should watch this, please share it with them. Um, and if you have any questions or thoughts and want some extra help, you can either message me over social media. You can put comments on this broadcast. I'll answer them below um, when I sign off. And if you want help, you know where to find me. Um, thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me. And I will see you again tomorrow with number 338. Maybe I'll take Ruth's topic about uh, red flags. We'll see. Um, take care of yourself. I was going to say, is there any homework? Yeah, here's, a, here's some homework for you. <laughs> Consider for yourself the two questions or the, the two choices. What do you really want? What do you want in a relationship? What's really your highest values? And what's in the way for you? What are the red flags? What are those things that you know you don't want? So, and cheers to you, Ruth, too. Um, so thank you for watching and there's your homework I'll see you again tomorrow as always take care of yourself and uh, be well I'll see you again tomorrow